her, her, her face net. I will make Ephraim derive. Judah shall plow and Jacob shall break. So to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. For it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Ye have plowed wickedness. Ye have reaped iniquity. Ye have eaten the fruit of lies because thou hast to trust in thy ways in the multitude of thy mighty men. Therefore shall tumult arise thy people and thou Fortress shall be spoiled, and Shalom spoiled Bethabel in the day of battle. The mother was dashed into pieces upon her children. So shall Bethel do unto you, because of your great wickedness. You will utterly be cut off. Um, once again, we're talking about uh, break up your fallow ground. Break up your fallow ground. You may be seated. Um, from a, a farmer's perspective, this particular scripture can be very easy to understand. But from, some, from, uh, from our perspective, those that are not cultivators of the land, it have to be explained in both in the psychological and in the, the, uh, the emotional aspect of it because it takes on a personality that we've taken on throughout the years. So when we talk about the breaking up my follow ground, from a psychological perspective, the, the, uh, the, the follow ground are uh, our system of beliefs. They are the things that we have become accustomed to to make us understand the way we understand, to be the way that we are, to think the way that we are, to believe the way that we are. In our system of beliefs, we often find religion, we find God, but also in that we find how we feel about relationships. We find how we feel about finances, how we feel about trust, uh, how we feel about building, building family, how we feel about our community, building equity, how we feel about our neighbors and all those things. They're wrapped up in our system of belief. It's what we've used in order for us to become who we are and be safe in a world that says that you and I don't matter, that we are one third of, hum of, of a human being in a system, a society um, that has spoiled uh, our, our, our women, children uh, to a point that we have to constantly be at odds and be an aggressively uh, in pursuit of, of happiness. Our system of beliefs have become who we are. But God says that you have to break that up. You have to break up those fallow grounds. And you have to break them up because you have been ensnared by the enemy. You have been ensnared like an, like an animal with its paw trapped in a, in a uh, what do they call that? A, a, uh, not a bear cage but in a trap you've been ensnared like an animal with its paw caught in the trap and what the animal will do is the most illogical thing the animal will gnaw off his paw to get out of the trap not knowing that after he gnaws off his paw he's going to bleed to death but just to be free you'll do whatever you have to be to be free you and I have been ensnared we've been entrapped We'll do whatever we have to do from a from a from a illogical standpoint just to be free, not knowing that what we do is going to have irre, uh, irreprehensible damage tomorrow. Because our system of beliefs says that we are to survive and not get ahead. We haven't looked at the dangers that the enemy is constantly doing um, to us to to keep us in the snare of the fowler. Instead of, instead of us thinking out the logical thing to do, uh, we jump to the illogical thing to save us for the moment, but we forget about our future. God says that you need to break up the fallow ground. From a farmer's perspective, uh, the farmer spends his time understanding the soil that he is uh, planting his crop in. He understands that in order for crops to have a great harvest, there's a amount of humus that has to be in the ground. The darker, the blacker the dirt, the more uh, proteins that are in the dirt for whatever it is that you plant shall grow. He understands that during the season while you've planted and you've reaped your harvest, during the downtime when there's nothing growing, you have to till up the ground. You have to allow the ground from, from it being impacted by your equipment, by your feet, 
or by oxen or whatever it is that have trailed over that, that have packed it the dirt, the soil on top of one another, not allowing the water to really saturate into ground at just surface level. He understands that after the season is over, that he has to till this ground. That he has to allow filtration, that the air, he has to separate what has been impacted, which has been stepped on, which has been smushed. He has to bring that back up so that water, so that nutrients, so that, so that the soil is ready for whatever new crop that he shall bring. So a farmer understands the benefits of breaking up fallow grounds. But for you that, and I that are not farmers, we have to understand the spiritual benefits of breaking up our system of beliefs because our system of beliefs have been predicated on doing the illogical thing which is just survival. We have 66 books that we have in our possession. 66 books, Old Testament and New Testament that describes what you and I have to do not only just to survive but the, as the word says live in the abundance yeah. and none of it is based on the illogical. It's all based on the spiritual aspects and the requirements that God has for us and the requirements that God said that he would, the things that God said that he was do. But it requires um, that we know that in every season of life, we have to break up the fallow grounds. We have to till up the soil if we expect the harvest to come in. If we expect the fruit of our blessings to be uh, to be demonstrated, to, to be given unto us, we have to do the things that make us prosperous in the land of milk and honey. God already says that He shall supply. We have to do the things to make whatever God supplies to live. We have to do those things. We have to break up the fallow ground. None of us uh, have the ability. To take on the responsibility of God. We are all seers, sowers. One sows, one waters. But God gives the increase. None of us have within us to make the increase occur until God gives us the ability to produce the increase. One sows, one waters. But we have to learn. To break up the fallow ground. What you have become is an instrument of survival. Because the uh, society has placed you in a position where you constantly hear what you can't be. Or constantly hear uh, what you are in the nature of uh, men, thugs, you're lazy, uh, you're not good fathers, you're not providers. You're not protect, pr protectors. Uh, women, all you do is bear, bear children. Um, you, you allow the men to run over you. All these, all of these negative things. So we constantly try uh, to fight off the negative. But what I'm doing is, is I'm really, I'm just chewing off my own paw. Because I'm not doing the things that are going to keep me going. Instead, I'm trying to defend what you're saying about me and all my attention is based on what you say about me instead of, instead of me believing what God has said. I spent all my day trying to rebuke what you have said about me as a man, as a black man, as a 43-year-old man, as a father, as a pastor, as a husband. I spent all my day trying to rebuke that instead of saying, God says that I am an entrepreneur. He says that I'm the head and not the tail. He said that I'm above and not beneath. I spent all my day trying to rebuke what you said about me because you have been ensnared. Your system of belief has programmed you to survive. But God says the opposite of that. He said you listen to wicked men. Instead, what you need to do is listen to me and break up your fellow ground. Break up your system of beliefs. Break up those philosophies that you have put in your mind in order for, for you to survive. Destroy those things um, that keep you from trusting people. Destroy those things that keep you from loving people. Destroy those things that keep you from providing for people. Destroy all of those things that you have built up 
to protect yourself in a world that doesn't love you as your own. Jesus already said, it said the world will not love you. It won't love you. But he says, I, I, I love you. And if I love you, and if you abide in me, I abide in the Father, we shall be one. That's the, all the love that you need. So instead of me wasting my time uh, trying to defend who I'm not, I'm going to use my spiritual intellect and I'm going to trust God. He tells uh, in Hosea, and also you'll find this in Jeremiah where they're talking about breaking up the follow, the follow grounds as well. But in Hosea, um, they're dealing with, with an issue where, uh, that, let me just say this, Hosea is infamously known to have, to have married uh, the wife Jezreel, and she was a prostitute. Uh, God told Hosea to do something that probably no person would want to do because of the nature of the business that the woman was involved in. So God was doing something really different in Hosea and in Israel and Judea and with Ephraim and with all of the other people. He was doing something uniquely different. So uh, take the, the book of Hosea and really study it so that you can understand how God can take the abnormal and make it extraordinary. So God says to Hosea, he says that you have to tell uh, Ephraim is going to be different. You're not going to tell uh, Judah and Jacob, they're going to be different because what I need you to do is I need you to be able to, to sow in righteousness, to reap in mercy. Um, that, but the only way you can do that is you destroy your system of beliefs. You can't walk in greatness and be trailing along behind misery. Right. Uh, you, you can't become what God declared that you shall be if you're still living in the, the could have, would have, should have. You have to be able to, to see and live in a place in the, in, in the passion of which God has created you because he's already declared it to be so. The only way you can do that is that I change the way that I believe. I haven't gotten where God says that I should be, not because God is lied about his promise. I haven't got there because I believed what the world has said about me. I've allowed them to distract me, to discourage me, to push um, my destiny to the outer realms of my life. So I think that it's unavailable for me to reach because I've entrusted what they said about me instead of believing what God says. He says that you have to sow yourself in righteousness. Righteousness says um, that I am right before God because Jesus has made me righteous. Because Jesus has died for me and I believe that he was the son of God and that God raised him from the dead. Therefore, everything that was done prior to that now is being uh, amended, being uh, equivalent, being, uh, what's it called when, when my record is my expunged. It's being expunged. The not guilty verdict, verdict is being placed upon me because of what I believe in my heart. Jesus is standing at the right hand of God interceding for me yes. and he's telling God, no, that's mine, not guilty. No, she's mine, not guilty. You have to do this because I've never lost a case. I've never lost one. Even the, the one in the, from the 99, I went back and got him because he was so important. So he said, you have to sow yourself in righteousness. Mm -hmm. Know that you're right with God because who you made yourself connected to. I can't be connected to my neighborhood and my hood or, or my school or my job and none of those things are righteous. I have to be connected to righteousness in order for me to become who God says that I am. I have to be connected to that thing that is perfect, that is pure, that is meek, that is humble, that is directly from God. I have to be stitched. That has to be sewn in my fabric. When I take my shirt off, it should say extra large and it should say Jesus Right behind it, because I am sown in righteousness. He says, because of that, I get to reap mercy. The Bible says that every day, God gives us brand new mercies. That means what I did yesterday, God is so compassionate that he says, son, I know you messed up, but I believe that you know you made a mistake, and instead of me holding that against you, I'm going to give you mercy instead of what you deserve because I am God. I am the one that has to say so. I make the decisions. I don't have to go to nobody and ask, and I don't have to ask you for permission to give you mercy because I am God. I'm going to give you mercy every day. But I have to be right. It's an order to this. You have to be right in order to receive what righteousness produces, which is mercy. But to get there, I got to get away from what I believe. 
Sometimes what I believe is what I've been taught. Children do not, are not born hating. Hatred is taught. Children are born to be naturally affectionate because they come out of their mother's womb. They are few, few inches away from the mother's heart, so they have to, they're already naturally attached to the mother. They come out expecting to trust, expecting for you to teach them the difference between love and hate. Hatred is not inherited. It is taught. So I have to sometimes get away from the things that I am taught because the things that I am taught may not necessarily go with who I am to become because the things that I'm taught, and we go back, we can go to school. When we were growing up, Gwen and I was talking about this, we, we learned about cursive writing, we learned about uh, different behaviors, we learned about how to use equipment, spoons, plates, and all of that, manners, all that stuff. Now, all those things are washed over with tests. You're taught how to take a test. We were taught about how to, how to balance a checkbook, how to do all of that, but now, math mathematics is what's replaced you learning on how to, 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 to sign into a checking account, to know what a credit card is, to understand the difference between a debit card and a credit card and how the financial system works because it's, you have been programmed to only learn a certain thing. You've been segregated even though you're in a classroom with people that don't look like you. You've been divided and you don't even know it that you're only being taught a certain thing so you can be in a specific place. You're not taught the importance of financial management in your school. You're not taught the, the importance of, uh, of, of maintaining your credit. You, you, you're not taught the things of the checks and balances of the system. You're only taught a certain thing so you can stay in a certain place. So sometimes the things that we have to break up are the things that we were taught. Yeah. The things that will keep us in a bear, yeah. in a snare, yeah. in a trap to gnaw your own arm off so you can bleed to death on your way to, your, to, to wherever you think you're going. Breaking up your fallow ground. Destroying the thing that is keeping you held down from your potential. He says, for it is time to seek the Lord. It's time to get away um, from occupying my time with things that don't benefit me from either perspective, whether those be from my emotional side, my spiritual side, or my psych psychological side. It's time to get away from that. And I really need to draw closer to God because there are things that are going on that only God can inform me and instruct me on how to deal with them. But if I've spent all my time, as I said earlier, trying to defend myself from who they say I am, I never can see God because I'm always in a defense mode. But in me, understanding that righteousness allows me to be at peace. Because I, I believe that Jesus is interceding for me, intercepting, that his angels, that the angels are encamped around me. All of those things that the word says to, about what he will do for me, I believe those things for me will be true. So I can let my, uh, let's just say my spiritual guards down just, just for a moment and believe that God is, it, it has, 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 has placed the hedge of protection around me and I don't have to spend all my try time trying to defend who I am because uh, my actions will speak for me. Um, the way that I stand up will speak for me. The way that I declare will speak for me. The way that I, that I love will speak to me. The way that I, um, that I rejoice will speak for me and I don't have to give you my whole resume for you to understand that I'm a child of the king. It'll come pouring out of me just like water, just, just like tears. It'll come out of me and you'll understand who I am and who I belong to. So, but I have to learn that I have to break up my fallow grounds. Like I said, some of it's about what you've been taught. Some of it is about what you've allowed to be attached to you because of your relationship with others. We have to be careful that um, on one hand we don't shake the hand of God and then on the other go and entertain the devil. There's always a thin line between being right and, and being, um, being wrong. And we have to stay. The word says that it's a broad is the way. But narrow is the way. And we have to stay on that very narrow path 
although there are a lot of temptations that are around us that seem attractive to us, there's only one way to be right with God. And that's to do the things that are right, decent and in order. So at times there could be people that we have connected ourselves to, um, that we are attached to, that we are bound, com made commitments with, um, that we will have to break ourselves away from in order for to us to break up our fallow ground because they are tied to something that I'm not tied to. What is it um, that's keeping you from walking in your destiny, from keeping you from being so great um, um, that even those that oppose you want to become just like you? It's because you haven't decided to change your system of beliefs. He says that once you break it up, he says, he, till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Um, in the book of, uh, what book is that? Well, he talks about uh, the former rain. And then he talks about the latter rain. The former rain are the things that we once had in order for us to get to where we need. The latter rain are all the blessings that are going that God will do in order for us to become that thing. I'm looking for God to start to pour the latter rain on yes. me. I'm not what I had because what I had was for then. I, I need the things that are going to push me to my now, to my destiny, and to my future. But I can't get there if I still have my same old uh, philosophy about life. If I'm still growing spiritually but I can't trust nobody. I'm not really growing. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm developing another, another habit. I, I'm not really progressing any forward if the way that I see people isn't changed when I'm spending more time with God. I, I have to allow some things to be uh, taken away um, from me. So how do we do it? How do we do it? We know that farmers have equipment to do it. But for us that are spiritual, we have to have spiritual things to deal with spiritual matters. So for, in order for us to break up our fallow grounds, um, this one, I'm going to say like Jesus said, this one requires uh, fasting yes. and praying. Yes. You can't do it without fasting and praying because if you could have, you would have done it a long time ago. Um, so what fasting and praying does about changing my spiritual beliefs, fasting allows my, my physical body and my spiritual body to detox and to starve. Um, from what I've been putting in it um, so that it reaches out for something else. And that way God can reach back and grab me. So fasting says that I'm going to start out um, that wolf that I've been feeding. The wolf was there to protect me from the world. But the wolf's job is done. It's time for the lamb. The wolf's job is done. So in order for me to get the lamb in front of me, I have to starve the wolf. So that he goes somewhere else to feed and the lamb can come and sit and reside, reside, reside within me. So fasting is how I began to break up this fallow ground, my system of belief. And then prayer. Prayer says that I'm going to go to my father. Uh, I'm going to ask him for every, everything that he needs to give me so that I can become whatever thing he requires of me. And that he'll do it um, because of my plea unto him. So I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray. And during the midst of those seasons while crops are being planted and plucked up and moved out and new things are being planted in, God will start to pour this latter rain on me. The old things will begin to pass away and all things become brand new. It's a continual basis. I'm changed in the, in the inkling of my own and my God is doing something in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world because I learned to really lean on fasting and praying. But my grounds won't get breaking up if I just go out there and say, bro, I start to just move. It don't work like it won't work like that because the grounds are attached to you. You need to learn to detach yourself from the ground. I need God to back back up a, 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 a bobcat full of dirt and put some new foundation out here to cover up the old. I need God to do something for me that is so magnificent, that is so marvelous, that is so wonderful, that my neighbors come out and say, you know that something is different. Uh, I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. But every time I pass by your house, there's something that just disturbs my spirit. And whatever I was thinking about is gone. And I just feel so pleasant. It's because I've learned that fasting 
and praying, not only does it benefit me, but everybody that comes within my presence. God says that he gave me dominion. Do you know what dominion is? Dominion was never occupied by a certain distance. Dominion is everything. Subdue everything, not just some things, but everything because he's given you um, the, the access for us to um, really reap the bountiful harvest. We have to fast. We have to pray. Then we have uh, to forgive. Often forgiveness is so tied up in your blessings, you really don't even understand the magnitude of forgiveness. Forgiveness allows me to detach myself from whatever that person, that thing is, and allow God to put a wedge. It's like a cartilage. Whenever I'm not forgiving somebody, all my, my arm, my shoulder, all of that hurts because the cartilage is weak because I've misplaced my, what, what was supposed to be there isn't there anymore, which is forgiveness. So when I forgive, I allow God to put that cartilage, that tissue back. And there's no friction between this bone and this bone. But because I think that I can do it on my own, I don't need no surgeon to come in and do something that I can just exercise. No, I need God to come in and surgically remove this thing from me because it's given me aches and pains that I don't really want. But, but I'm holding on to unforgiveness. Forgiveness, prayer, and fasting is how I begin to allow God to break up this fallow ground. But you have to want it. You have to, you have to want to be uh, in God's hands and allow him to be uh, your farmer, your supervisor. Whatever it is, he needs to be in order for you to get there. You have to allow God to be there. But if you don't, he says, you have already plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you didn't trust in my way, basically, but in the multitude of mighty men. You haven't gotten, we haven't gotten where we're supposed to be, not because God has lied, but because our system of beliefs have been predicated on survival. God says now it's time to stop trying to survive and try to live in the abundance because I already declared it's for you. But you have to break up your fallow grounds. I have to destroy all the things that I have fabricated in my mind to be a part of my system of beliefs uh, that kept me safe when nobody would keep me safe. Um, that listened and talked to me when nobody would listen and talk to me. Um, that made me, by my reflection in my mirror, that made me somebody that I wanted to see. All those things that I did in order for me just to survive. God says, no, we have to get rid of that. We have to discard it. Because I got something new for you. I got some bread of bread new things for you. But I can't put old, 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 uh, old wine in new wine skin. I can't put new wine in old wine skin. I, I, I need you to change your attitude, your behavior, your characteristics. I need to change, to change your philosophy, your ideology. I need for you to change everything about you if, if you expect to reap this bountiful harvest. I've got something for you. Come get it. He says, I got plans. I got purpose. Come get it. I need you. Not only want you, but I, I need you. That's how good God loves us. He says, I need you. I want you. Therefore, I sent my son for you. While you were yet in sin, the word says that he died on the cross. While we were in the midst of trouble, he said, I'm here, send me. While we were still doing the things that were wrapped in the world, he said, I'll die for you again if I need to, but I only died once. Hoping that you'll get it right. How many times do we have to go through the same cycle for us to understand that's not good for you? God says, I'm trying to break the habit. I'm trying to break the yoke. I'm trying to destroy. But I need you to begin to sow. I need you to begin to, to cultivate. I need you to begin to do the things that are going to break up, destroy the yoke of the enemy. I won't do it for you. If, if you want to ask me to. If you won't pray, if you won't fast, if you won't forgive, then my hands are tied. All I can do is give you what you've earned. Wickedness, iniquity, lies. Because you believe what they said versus my report. 
breaking up your fallow grounds is what we all need to do.